Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. If you have 30 minutes to practice every day, what should you work on? I think it's important that we think about this, whether you have 30 minutes or not. There's of course not going to be one solution that fits everybody. This is going to, going to be about finding your personal solution to, to that question. But at the same time, you do want to think about, you do want to evaluate how you're spending your time because you don't want to waste any time and you want to be as efficient as possible. In this video, I'm going to go over what I think a 30 minute practice session could look like. And I'm going to discuss topics like technique, vocabulary, repertoire, theory, ear training, exercises and transcriptions. I'm going to give you some suggestions on what I think and also what I practice. But I'm of course also really curious about how you work and what you practice and what you think about this. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. As I said, I'm really curious about how you practice and what you're working on. So if you have a practice routine or if you have some exercises that you think are really useful, then leave a comment. You can, for instance, make sort of a list of what you're going over if you have a daily practice schedule and talk a little bit about everything that's going on, like the one that I'm showing here. I'll do the same in the comments. Technique and warm up. Of course, you can go straight to the scales when you start, but you can also start with these sort of chromatic exercises where you really don't have to worry about what you're playing and it's a lot easier and you can just focus on getting the hands and the fingers moving. So something like this. Here you really don't have to worry about what is going on. You just have to play, play it and let them get your hands started. You can work on this in uh, in a position like I'm doing now, but you can also work on them across the, the range of the guitar, so that'll be something like this. The next thing I like to do is to work on some arpeggios, because that's a little bit more demanding for my right hand, and then I can get that warmed up a little bit more. So you can do that, of course, in positions like this. You can also do it across the neck, so something like this. Another thing that I like to do for working on my right hand, uh, which is about alternate picking and string skipping especially, is to play small exercises or improvisations with uh, spread triads. Uh, this is a part of an exercise that I actually stole from uh, Steve Morse. And I think he actually made it into a deep purple piece as well. You should probably just spend like two or three minutes doing exercises like this that are like the chromatic exercise and warming up, playing a few arpeggios. And then the biggest part of your practice should probably be working with scales. The reason why I say that is that my way of approaching scales and my way of approaching improvisation is that if you're in the key of C major and you're improvising over a G7 chord, then I kind of see the C major scale on the neck as sort of all the notes that are available and the G7 arpeggio within those, uh, within the C major scale as the important notes that I want to hit when I'm improvising. And then when this moves to the next chord, then another set of notes in the same scale are going to be important. When it comes to scale practice, I think one of the things you want to make sure of is that you practice in all 12 keys. So you don't have to do that every day. If you only have 10 minutes in total to practice technique, then probably all the, scale, all the keys in one day is a little bit ambitious. But then you want to have sort of a, a way of doing that. So in every few days, you'll have covered all 12 keys. So you want to have C major, of course, in this position, but you also need A flat major. It's really simple in that respect. The next thing that you want to check out is also just knowing sort of the basic diatonic harmony. Now in jazz, that's going to be the diatonic seventh chords. So for our C major scale, you want to practice exercises like this. Just move through the scale like that. Uh, and then, that, then you also want to know what arpeggios you're playing. So A minor 7, E half diminished, C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7. And this is stuff that you need when you're starting to improvise in C major, because those are the chords you're going to come across. A way to also develop some flexibility in your scale practice is to make variations of the exercises. So change it up a lot. You don't have to play fast, you just have to try out a lot of different things so that whatever you imagine that you want to play when you're soloing, you can also get out of the scale. Uh, so a good example of that would be if we have the diatonic triads. Then maybe try to switch around the way that you're playing them. So instead of playing them ascending, 
play them descending and see how that works. So, And that way just try out different patterns, different configurations, see if you can do that. And I think the way to do this also is a way of really working with ear training because you hear you hear the scale and then if you have some sort of pattern and you want to move that through the through the scale you're not really thinking about the note at least I'm not thinking about the notes I'm just trying to hear how this fairly predictable melody would sound if I move it through the scale and then I'm sort of letting that come out of my fingers and that turns out to be really useful in terms of just uh, playing what you hear playing music Very often I think the students forget that they really have to spend a huge chunk of their practice time actually playing music. If you want to be good at playing jazz, then your practice session should also include a huge chunk that is actually playing jazz music, of course. So you want to play songs and this is where you're really trying to get all the other things to work together and you're also just working on your ability to use all these, thing these things and make music and hear how that sounds. This is also the part that I've only given 10 minutes, but if you have more time, this is what you should expand on. You should spend more time just practicing. Just put on a metronome and work on some songs. In this case, the metronome is on two and four, and then you wanna play the song, but you can also try to do other things like just try and comp and see how it is to actually play the chords and get that to sound good, how to sit in the groove. Uh, you can also work on more specific exercises like only improvising with arpeggios or trying to work with a motif or trying to work with a specific type of rhythm or subdivision. And in that way, really work on different aspects, but really trying to do so while making music and while playing a piece of music. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support, and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. Ear training and vocabulary. Ear training is an important part of developing as a jazz musician. And of course you develop that in part also by doing some of the exercises that I already talked about, like uh, playing some sort of simple melody through a scale. So in this could be something like playing um, diatonic uh, six intervals, like where you're using your ears uh, to hear the melody and then try and play that. And you don't have to think about the notes that you're playing or sort of think about what the next note is. There's mostly something going on about how your ear is expecting a certain melody and then you're trying to play that and see if it fits. Another thing that's really useful is also, of course, to use this when you're improvising and especially working with motifs and call response is a good way to work on this. Another way to work on training your ears that's not directly guitar related and actually doesn't have to involve the guitar at all is to work in a more focused way using something like computer programs or phone apps. Uh, I've had a period where I worked a lot with a computer program called Earmaster. And I also see a lot of students now that are using uh, apps like Functional Ear Trainer. And I think there's an iOS app called just called Ear Trainer. That's pretty good. So you can, of course, do that. It's really easy to sort of make a small schedule that's going to take you five minutes to work through and that you can easily do every day. And this is also the kind of thing that you can actually do when you're away from the guitar. So there's sort of an added bonus there because it's easier to fit in. Two other great ways to develop your ear and also really practice to play what you hear is to work on transcriptions. So learning some solos, and trying to play them along with a record, which is also really helpful for your phrasing and your timing, and of course, also your, your technique. Another exercise that's also really useful is to take a song that you already know. So in this case, I'm using like an old Danish song that I know and I can probably sing it, but uh, I never played it before and then I'll just sit down and see if I can play it, choose a key, find the first note and then see if I can play it and that way work it out and really try to play what I'm hearing inside. Developing and expanding your vocabulary is also something that you really want to have as a part of your daily practice routine. And in this case it's something that I've assigned something like five minutes to. You can keep it fairly simple 
and just try to take one phrase that you transcribed or that you found in a book or uh, maybe one arpeggio or one scale sound that you're working on and then try and sit down and see if you can compose some lines with it try to find a way that you can put it into your playing and combine it with the other things that you normally play when you're improvising this really helps you know what you're doing but it also helps you develop some playable and some really useful vocabulary that you can then start using when you're improvising over songs. Let me know in the comments what your practice routine looks like. I think sharing information like this is extremely useful and of course if you have a great exercise or maybe a topic that I didn't talk about then let me know in the comments about that as well. If you want to learn some more ideas about what you should be working on and what you should be busy with if you want to improve as a jazz musician then check out this video which I call the 10 commandments of learning jazz guitar and of course, if you want to learn more about jazz guitar, you can also subscribe to my channel. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.